Father, we just give you all the praise. We give you all the glory today. You are our, an amazing God. And Lord, we're just today, we're, we're your people. We're all very, very different. But Lord, there's one thing that we have in common here, that we love you with all of our heart. And Lord, there's a passion that's burning on the inside of us for you to have your way in our midst, for you to be able to just do and, and have your being, Lord, and, and take us to the place that you want to take us to. And Father, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. this morning, I just want to share something that I believe will help us to understand ourselves, understand some of the situations and some of the things that happen to us because I believe that God doesn't want us to be unaware of the enemy's plan. And the enemy knows us. I don't know about you, but most of us are like uh, switchboards. We've got this thing in front of us that if you push the wrong button, it causes a reaction. <laughs> if you push the right button, you get another reaction. And there's all these buttons in there. And I think the enemy has a master key. And sometimes there he starts to do those sort of things. And, but I just want you to understand some things today. And I, and I believe that I got a lot out of this. Anyhow, it helped me. Uh, in, in the Bible, in the book of Genesis 1.26, just have a quick look with me there. We're going to start from the very beginning. We're not going to end in, Gen, in, in Genesis, though, in, in Revelation. In 1.26 it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. If you notice the our is capital O. It's in what God is saying, we're gonna make man in our image. And we've got to really understand this, that I am not a mistake in zippers. I have been made by God for God, amen? You were made by God for God. Nancy often speaks because uh, she was um, born out of wedlock, if I can say that, and Sometimes she refers to herself, she used to think that she was a mistake as two people came together uh, through lust and uh, she was the result of that. And so, you know, she had a low self-esteem, a low opinion of herself. She was adopted out at two, uh, at two weeks old, feeling unwanted. So insecurity, inferiority, all those sort of things started to grip around her life. And as, as that sort of thing happens, there's some, there's, the truth is what will make us free. Do you believe that? And you've got to know the truth about us. There's no such thing as an accident in God. You were made by God, for God. You were made in the image of God. And that's, that's who we really are. So if we can establish some foundations and to build your life on, to build your spiritual life on, when the enemy does come in, you're going to have something to stand up against and say, that is not true. Because while you're thinking that all those things that Nancy used to think about herself, when the enemy used to come in and say, you're useless or you're no good, you'll never make it, she came into agreement with the enemy. But when you know the truth and you say, no, I was made by God, I was made for God, I have a, a, a hope and I have a destiny, I have a future because God has a plan for my life and devil, you're not going to stop the plan that God has for my life. You, you see, you've got to, if you remember the last few weeks, we've been talking about our, our confession. But if you don't really know who you are and what God has done for you and, and, and those sort of things, you've got really nothing to stand on. And so today I want to lay a foundation so as that we can build upon a rock and not upon the sand. Amen? Build upon the Word of God. So God created man in His own image and in His own likeness. And God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish and all those sort of things. And it says in verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. Now in chapter 2, verse 7, and, the Lord, and it says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. God got, took the dust of the earth, He created and formed the fashion of man. And then He took man and He breathed into him and man became a living being. Without the breath of God, 
We're nothing, amen? Without the breath of God, without the life of the Spirit, we are nothing. We're just clay things walk, going through life with no meaning, no, no real purpose. I praise God that we got born again, filled with the Spirit, and now God has given us a purpose and a destiny, amen? And so, man, you know, we know that the uh, flesh goes back to the earth, but the Spirit goes back to God. When, when God uh, breathed in him, the Spirit of God came into him, and man became a living being. In Genesis 3 verse 1, it says this, it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the servant, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you, must, you will not surely die, for God knows the day that you eat of it, you, your eyes will be open. And we know the fall of man. Something that, what we've got to realize is something that God never created became. God never ever created fallen man. God created a living being. God created a man that had a, and a woman that was destined for glory. Amen. He, he, had a, he, he created a human being that would have dominion and power and authority and victory over every work of the enemy. He wanted him to, to, to have dominion. He wanted him to go out and multiply. He wanted to be a blessing. We know that God came down in the cool of the evening. He prepared a garden and, and I believe that would have been magnificent fruit and magnificent things in there. But he created it for you and me. But the enemy came in. And when the enemy came in, something happened that was so catastrophic that, that, that something that God had never ever intended, that God never created became. And we now have the result of that fallen man. Man that, that is now led by the flesh. And when that happened, when men fell, something that God never created happened. But also what happened between human beings, between you and I, is the, is the war between the physical realm, the natural man, and the spirit man began. Do you know that there's a war goes on inside of you every day, most probably? Choices, challenges, things like that that go on. Where, the, where, you know, if we, if we don't really know, we will fall into the temptations. But here we find that this situation that arose, that this, that this war started to happen. And the war between the, the physical, the natural or the fallen nature, the spiritual, the divine nature came into being. All the devil has to do sometimes is just sow something into your mind. And when he sows it into your mind, we do the rest with it. You'll never make it, you'll, you know, and sometimes it might have been spoken over you by your dad, your mother, your school teacher, somebody that you love, somebody that you respected, somebody that if you're in the ministry, some great ministry came in and said something about you and it just brought distraught and, dis and it destroyed something on the inside of you. Friend, the war that goes on, it rages, it rages on the inside of us. The enemy touches a button and we react, we, we carry on. But friend, I want to tell you today that, that God wants to do something so dynamic and so powerful. He wants to open our eyes so that we can realize what God's doing. You see, today, before we can get into unity with the body, we have to come into unity with ourself. We've got to, I've, got to, I've got to realize who I am. I've got to realize that God loves me, that God cares for me, that God saved me, and that God's delivered me. Unity within ourselves. If we don't do that, well, things go wrong. I believe that Jesus has given us the ministry and He has the ministry of reconciliation. See, when, when you're at peace with yourself, when you're at peace with yourself, you have peace in the world. But when you're not at peace with yourself, when, when there's a war ranging on the inside of you, everybody seems to be your enemy. Can you understand what I'm saying here? Somebody that's successful now, instead of being able to praise God for their success, all of a sudden it challenges the failure in my life. And so instead of being able to rejoice with them, they become my enemy now. 
I can remember as a young man, I was so, so, before I was born again, I was so introverted. There was reasons for that that I'm not going to go into. But I was so shy, so introverted. And, and, and you know, my shyness, I'd, I'd be sitting in the corner and next minute Mr. Extrovert would come in the room. Ever met one of them? You're most probably looking at one right now. <laughs> But the extrovert would come in and he'd be jumping around and doing this and doing that. And what that would do with me, I wanted to get up and I wanted to punch him in the head. I didn't even know him. He was most really a lovely guy. But you see, his success was attacking my failure. But when you get in peace with yourself, I don't worry about extroverts anymore. Frank doesn't trouble me anymore. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, glory to God. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about now? You know, you might, you know, it's, it's not whether you're, you're too fat, too skinny, too short, too this, too whatever it is. God loves us. That's all that matters. Amen. I tell you what, I, we sing in that song there. In the first verse, I just felt my eyes filled with tears. Because just to, to love Jesus, Amen to think that God picked me up and, and used me and, and, and loved me that much, revealed His love to me. What an amazing thing. See, we've, we've got to understand these things. When you're at peace with yourself, you don't have conflict. Conflict, conflict. I'm too tall, I'm too short, I'm too fat, I'm too skinny. I, I'm no good. Find a, a skinny girl, a, you know, a, a, a nice girl, she thinks she's skinny. Beautiful girl thinks she's ugly. Great people with great abilities think they're losers. Conflict within ourselves and then people that are successful, they, they, they challenge us. And, and there's a war rages within us. You know that conflicts in the church are really not spiritual? Most conflicts in the church are, are physical. Somebody sat in my seat. Somebody used my car park. Somebody did this. <laughs> I'm leaving the church. He didn't say hello to me. <laughs> he, did, it, 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 he walked straight past me. Give the guy a break, amen. You don't know what they're going through. Can you imagine? Can you imagine while Roma was going through what she was going through? Can you imagine that she comes to church one day and all of a sudden there all the memories and all the hurts and all the disappointments rush and, and, and get into her mind and she's sitting there and, 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 she's got, and she gets up because she, she walks past you. Glory to God, give her a break, amen. <laughs> you don't know what that person beside you is going through. If you had time to stop and love on them, you might. Can you imagine but I'm, what I'm saying here? But there's, it's not spiritual because we all love Jesus, amen? We all know that we, there's lots of things we don't agree on. <laughs> tell the truth and shame the devil. If we started having a quiz time, I want to tell you we could end up in a big blue. <laughs> Especially if we just started asking about end times. <laughs> Start talking about here. Start talking about finance. Start talking about tithing. Man, I want to tell you that, that spirit, we just love Jesus. Amen. It's the other things that get up people's noses. Cause conflict in the church. Conflict. What you've got to know is you're loved. How many people know you're loved? Cared for? In Genesis 3.24, we find out what happened to man when man fell. It says, so he, God, drove out the man and he placed a cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned each, every way to guard the way of the tree of life. So here we find that, there was a, that man was driven out and when that happens to you, rejection comes. I want to tell you, my dog knows rejection. Get out of here! The tail drops down and out there. <laughs> Rejection. 
See, what, what we've got to realize is Adam and Eve on the planet, I said it last week, why God, didn't God just wipe the slate and start again? But anyhow, when they, when they made a mess of it, but that didn't happen. There's these two people on the planet and God has to. You know what? Can I say this, friends? It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It's the goodness of God that drove them out of the garden. But what happens is man doesn't see what God's doing half the time. We just allow the rejection and the hurt and the disappointment and everything like that to fill our lives. And rejection flooded into humanity. And men, humanity, I believe one of the greatest tragedies of humanity today is rejection. Rejection is a horrible thing. Have you ever been rejected? <laughs> Have you, you know what, you can, you've got to catch my drift here, friends. I'm going somewhere with this, amen? So, so we understand. And then it says, and Adam, in verse, chapter four, verse one, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. And she bore again this time her, her his brother Abel, and Abel was the keeper of sheep. I have acquired a man from the Lord. So here she is now, and I just want to, where, where am I going? I've lost my spot again. <laughs> it says there, Cain was a keeper of the ground, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. We know that there came a time when they came and brought an offering. Cain brought from the ground. Abel brought the first, uh, what was it? The first offspring, I here. Bought, bought a, a fatted lamb, obviously. He brings that before the Lord. When Cain walks in with his offering, God sees and I believe it would, the, the royal show that's going on right now, I believe that the display of fruit and vegetables and like that, he would have had something similar to that, that he was offering up to God the best that he could do himself. But God says, hey, I'm sorry, I cannot accept that because it's your own works. Friend, today you cannot earn your place in heaven. You cannot earn it. It has to be received by faith. And Abel comes and he brings uh, the fatted lamb and God accepts it and blesses him. And then he goes over to Cain and, and he says, Cain, why has your countenance fallen? What's wrong with you? All you've got to do is do good and you'll be accepted. Everybody say accepted. Do good and you'll be accepted. But you see, he, he said, be careful. He said, be careful. You see, this is the trap of the enemy. We do have to be careful. Be careful, he said, because sin lies at the door and its intention is to kill you. It's after you. Sin is after you. Just be careful what you do with that thing that's starting to rage within you. It was already in man because his mum and dad had been driven out of the garden. Driven out. They most surely would have walked past uh, and, and looked at the Garden of Eden there and, and uh, Cain and Abel would have said, Mum and dad, didn't we live there? He said, yes, but your mum ate us out of house and home. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I heard that. I had to say it. <laughs> Sin lies at your door and its tension is after you. It will destroy you, it will kill you. And he didn't listen because inside him there was this thing that, that was raging in him, this, 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 that, that he'd been rejected and, and now God's rejected him and, and it's just there. And of course, he, he goes out there with Abel. You see, he knew Abel was his brother. His Abel was not his enemy, but this thing inside him, he's thinking, man, if I destroy the one that's accepted, then I'll be accepted. 
And that's, what, that's, that's, nat- that's how humans, that's how the flesh thinks. The flesh is always, always trying. Look at Woolworths and Coles and, and Aldi and there's all this war going on. They're all trying to get that, that place, amen. And it is the destruction that's, that it leaves behind. And here, here is this man. He's thinking, man, he's accepted. I'm rejected. I don't know what I'll do. I'll get rid of him. And, you know, in, in life, if there's somebody there that's accepted, we, we want to somehow or other pull them down. There may be another church in town and, and it's doing well and it's doing this and it's, oh, man. But, oh, now I'm, the people have left my church and they've gone to that church now. Oh, glory to God. And so what you do, you've got to start pulling that thing down. You know what that is? That is not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. We belong to a kingdom of God, hallelujah. And we've just got to be able to bless people anyhow, amen. I don't know what goes on. I've never been there. I've just been here for the last five years. (laughs) Praise God for that. But you see, you, you can't pull, kill somebody else so you feel better. And what you've got to realize when that, that happens, and I want to tell you there's not one person in this room that that hasn't happened to. Shut your eyes and lift up your hand and <laughs> shame the devil. I've done it. You've done it. We've all done it because that's natural. But it's wrong. We've got to change the way we think. The way we do things. Understand that, that, this, that, that what's going on, is, it's got to stop in Jesus' name. You can see how long, I preached this a hundred years ago. <laughs> Adam knew his wife. There's four people on the planet at this time and they can't get on with one another. We want to blame everybody. <laughs> it's not because there's more churches or more countries or more denominations or more this or more that. It's got nothing to do with it. There's only four people on the planet and they couldn't get on together. So what you've got to recognise is the seeds that, they, that have been sown on the inside of us that is laying at the door waiting to destroy us. And when that starts to rage and rant inside you, you've got to put a stop to it. Am I doing okay here today? You've got to stop it. Otherwise, its intention is to kill you, to destroy you. We know there that, that, that this man, young man rose up, killed his brother. God comes down and says, where's your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? And he says, God says, your brother's blood cries out to me. And he said, you're, 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 he drove him away further. You see, when you kill the one that's accepted, thinking now God's going to have to accept me, no, you get more rejected. And it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse until hatred and bitterness and anger, glory to God, just rages within us. We've got to stop it in Jesus' name, amen. For the kingdom of God to grow, we have to get peace within ourselves. I've got to know who I am. I know where I come from, hallelujah. But I know where I'm going. You know where you're going today? If you don't know where you're going, you need to find out. Jesus, I believe that, 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 that believe, wants us to know that we can be born again, filled with His Spirit. Cain's offering was not accepted, but God had to reject him, amen. The biggest problem in life is not being accepted. Let me just get down to some natural things. Can I, can I say this? One of the greatest things that ever happened to me outside of being born again, spirit-filled, and the love of God coming into my heart is Nancy. I get a bit emotional here. She's the twinkle in my eye. 
She's the joy in my heart. She's the sugar in my coffee. <laughs> I'm looking at you. He's looking at you, baby. Fifty six years ago, at a Methodist church in Hermit Park, Nancy, I was standing up the front in my suit. I had my white gloves over my hand. I had the little thing in my pocket. I turned around and I saw this angel walking down the aisle with her 18 inch waist. <laughs> There she was, walking down the aisle, beautiful white dress. But you see, in that beautiful white dress with the 18 inch waist was a bag of troubles. <laughs> I don't care how you dress it up. There was this bag of troubles. And me with my suit, my white gloves, and was another bag of troubles. And two bags of troubles collided. We went from wedlock to deadlock. <laughs> Didn't know what was going on. I, I didn't know all that she'd been through. She didn't know all that I'd been through. She just fell in love with this guy with a white shirt, with a white pullover I had. She said, who's that guy with the white jacket? He looks all right. And that was the beginning of it. She went after me, by the way. <laughs> she didn't really know. We were just kids. She was 15, I was 14, all the 14 year olds put you in there. She was 14 when we met. We just fell in love. I can remember the, seeing her and my, bang, something went off inside. Bing! I was, I was as useless as an ashtray on a motorcycle. <laughs> I didn't know uh, all the rejection that was in her. She didn't know all the mess that was in me. I didn't know that, that if you left your undies on the floor, that that was bad. I've been doing it for 20 odd years. Well, after we got married, mum didn't mind. <laughs> I, I didn't know leaving the toilet lit up was bad the house I lived in we didn't even have a toilet lid <laughs> but you know Nancy because of being rejected and put and all that stuff she had a but she'd look at that and she'd say he doesn't love me. If, if he loved me, he would pick up his undies. It's only a pair of undies. And an odd shirt and a sock and a few other things. That rejection was just, didn't matter. Didn't matter. We, 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 we were struggling, you know what I mean, when you first get married. And... Uh, I can remember, I'd, how many people know the devil's got a lot of little helpers out there? I'd come home from work, working late and so forth and come home and Nancy would be there crying her eyes out and say, what's wrong with you? What's wrong? Oh, if you really love me, you would have fixed the sink by now. I said, what? The sink? What used to make Nancy really, really ticked off? Is if she'd want me to do something for about two months and uh, 
she, till, I, till I end up, I'd get up there and I'd say, okay, and I'd go, and I'd, okay, and I'd go. And she'd say, have you fixed that already? Yeah? How long was it? A minute? <laughs> I tell you what, guys, last at least five minutes. <laughs> Don't if it only takes you a minute, take at least five. <laughs> Just keep you out of a lot of trouble. That's a word of the Lord this morning. <laughs> and, you know, and and yeah, and then a couple of days, weeks or a week later, something like that, the same thing about something else and something else and something else. And eventually I came, in, I came home one day and I said, she was there crying. I said, Nancy, I said, has such and such been in here today with you? She said, yeah, she's been here all day. She's pushing Nancy's button. Devil's little helpers. How many people know these devil's got some helpers out there? Here she was, walking down the hall. But you see, what happens is that then Nancy met her birth mother, but she didn't meet her till you were how old? Mid 50s, so for 30 years. <laughs> and her mother wanted her. And a, a, a preacher man because she didn't know her name or who she was or what when the roles are called up yonder who are they going to call me I don't know who but she was birth was Margaret Mary good Catholic girl and a, and a prophet put his hand on her head and said the Lord knows your name and then she met her mother and her mother said I wanted you I wanted you but they took you from me and, and then all of a sudden all the works of the enemy you see the truth is what sets you free the truth and the word of God says, hey, I love you. And because of the joy that was set before you, before me, I endured the cross for me. Jesus endured the cross for me. Nancy and every one of us, friend, we've got to get rid of that war that goes on on the inside of us. And the book of James chapter 4, I think it says, it says, where do these wars come from? Where does this raging come from? It comes from within us. And see, within us, and you know you'll go through that and you'll bless that because uh, when you're doing James now. But the, where this, these members that are in us roaring and raging and the hurts and the, and the things that have been sown in there. Friend, I, you've just got to let God be God. Amen. See, see when man, when man was, when, when uh, Cain, and, uh, sorry, not Cain, when Seth was born, the Bible says that Eve and, and Adam spoke and they said, we have got a man child. We've got a child in our image, in our likeness, not in small o, in our likeness, in our image, fallen. See, every human, when we were born on this planet, we we're born in a fallen state. That's why Jesus said, You must be born again. You've got to be born again. Friend, it's no good just being a good person. It's no good just trying to do good things. It's no good just trying to bring the produce of your hands and present them to God and saying, God, I've been a good person. I've been a nice person. I've done this. I've done that. I've done all these good things. But God says, no, you can't do it on your own. I cannot accept that. But what I can accept is the blood of my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And today we come boldly before the throne of grace and we come washed in the precious blood. Amen. Friend, I want to tell you, I, I, you know, marriages and that, wars, rages in our, in our marriages. And friend, I want to tell you, we've got to put a stop to it. We've got to understand where it comes from. Because you will not, you will have conflict all your life until you get peace on the inside and know who you are and what you are. I, my biggest boast is I'm a child of the Most High God. Hallelujah. I'm born again. I'm filled with the Spirit of God. Man, I've got potential. That makes us winners, amen. That makes us the head and not the tail. That causes us to overcome and triumph. And, and, I, and I pray that what I've been sharing today might help somebody to be able to bust the, 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 the things that, that cause us. I want to tell you, it doesn't matter. Young children, there's that thing that's in them because it's already in them, amen. That, that thing that, that, that hates the one that's been accepted. 
and tries to wipe out the acceptance. God is on the throne, amen? There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. It's not who wins. Had a good friend that once used to say all the time, it's more than winning and losing, it's life and death. Amen? Life and death. Father, I ask you today in Jesus' name. Father, would you speak to us? Lord, would you speak to each and every one of us today, my God, and help us as we, as we do. Lord, as Frank was sharing today that there's an enemy out there that he is on assignment. And he knows the weaknesses of our flesh. He knows the weaknesses of our flesh. We are body, soul, and spirit. Lord, our spirit man has to rule, not our flesh man. Help us to rule over our emotions. Help us to rule over those things that cause us to react. Help us to rule over those things, Lord, that that cause us to, to fail in Jesus' name. And let us be able to accept the, the, the goodness of, of, of what other people have achieved in Jesus' name. Lord, the church is on the coast. The great church is on the coast. Lord, let us, let us honor them in Jesus' name. Lord, let us, let us have a, a great respect. And Lord, let, let, let us just be ones there that could lift them up in Jesus' name. They're not our enemy. They're not our enemy. And Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. While our heads are bowed in this house today and eyes are closed, if you're in this house today and and you know you need to give your life to Christ, you know that there's something on the inside of you that, that is away from God and you need to respond to Jesus. Because you know that 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 flesh man is is dominating and controlling and triumphing over the joy that that should be yours. Father, I'm asking you today that you would speak to people. Draw them to yourself. The Lord said this morning, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. He's never ever left you. He's always with you. But he's asking you, would you respond to him today? If you're away from God, if you're heart's not really right with God, would you respond to God today and say, God, I I just want to come to you in Jesus' name. I want to come to you in Jesus' name today. If that's you today, would you just quickly slip up your hand? I want to come to you, Jesus. Lord, I come to you. Coming to you today, Jesus. Just quickly slip it up. Let's say that. Don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed. It's me today. Just quickly slip it up. 